Hello and welcome back to my channel. So it's Lainey Spitfire here and today I thought I would do a story time video. So I've already done a daily vlog, uh, that's already live on my channel if you want to check it out. Um, that's me making my homemade detox drink for the morning. Um, do check it out, let me know what you think, I would love to hear all your feedback. So. Um, I've decided to do a series on my channel of cooking and story time. So the first story time that I thought I would start with, so this is episode one, um, is the day that everything changed for me. So this isn't to do with my fibro, this is to do an accident that I was in when I was about 16. So I've got my dandelion and burdock drink, so I'm just going to drink that and chat to you about it so i've mm. already done this video several times um and i didn't like it so i thought i would try again and hopefully i'll be able to tell you my story um because i am so grateful to all the subscribers mm. that i've got on my channel i really am sorry my phone is vibrating um, I really am. You've been there for me since I've come back from my break from YouTube. But I just thought I would show another side of me. And I spoke to some of my friends and some of my subscribers about this idea that I had. Um, and they said, maybe if you talk to your subscribers in a video like this, you'll be able to get a bit more closure. So about 12 years ago, in 2005 I was in a car crash I was only 16 and um, we just went for a drive friends just went for a drive I wasn't driving um, but I was sitting behind the driver and unfortunately we crashed so I, I, I still replay it in my head um, a lot especially when I'm in other people's cars, you know, if I don't know they're driving very well. Um, I'm learning to drive at the moment. That has helped me a great deal to get a bit more confident as well. Um, but I just, I do, I get flashbacks of this and I just thought I would come on here and just share the whole story. So I was 16. We were driving down the country road and the driver unfortunately who was inexperienced at the time lost control of the car no fault of their own just that they lost control of the car um, and we rolled down the road several times and landed on top of another car like this so we have rolled and if it wasn't for that car that we had landed on we probably would have been in a ditch somewhere along the road. So I got out of the car and I phoned my mum and dad. But prior to this, I had been knocked out um, and I heard all the, the grinding of the gravel and everything. Um, and when I came to, they were my friends. so. I, I automatically thought the worst, so the, the first thing I did was I screamed, um, I, I screamed for my family, um, I just, I was a complete nervous wreck, um, there was blood, obviously, um, and there was someone missing out the car, but that person had managed to get themselves out safely, so there were two other passengers in, which were my friends, um, they were bleeding and obviously I thought the worst um, I was only young I was 16 so and I know I shouldn't have done this I got out the vehicle and sat on the pavement um, and the first thing I did is I took my phone and I phoned my mum and dad and I don't know how I came across in the conversation but my mum and dad only thought it was a prank so they get there and by then 
the paramedics had already come to the scene because in that time I had managed to call the emergency services and calm down a bit. So they get there and because I was behind the driver and I knocked myself out, my head had gone back like um, a doll's head they had to call the air ambulance so this is why I give money to air ambulance now so they had to put me on the spinal board they had to put a collar on as well they had to strap me down and my mum and dad get there just as I'm about to be put in the sorry in the air ambulance and I'm sorry I didn't want to cry that's why I've done it several times so my mum gets there and there's police there as well and if you're a parent and you're watching this to see your child sorry on a spinal board and the police to tell you that you can't come and see your child. I can't imagine what I had put my mum through that day and my dad. I really can't. And I think that's a part of why I still can't forget this incident. So, sorry. And I'm not very good at editing, so I can't edit this out either. So I was then put in the ambulance after I said to my mum and dad that I was okay. I kind of lied to myself saying that, that I was okay when really I wasn't. So I got to the hospital and there were all these doctors around me and I was so young, I was only 16 and i never been to hospital, i never been to A&E ever in my life and they were trying to stick like um, access, IV accesses in me and I was saying no 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 I don't want this, I want my mum and dad here because I was so young and they said well we have to do this treatment so they held me down well this was for, for me because I was still with the neck collar on and still on a spinal board so they wanted to give me fluids and just in case they needed to give me any more medicine but the worst thing of it all is because I was airlifted to hospital I was airlifted to another hospital where my friends were not there so we were all separate and I felt so alone I really did um, and then my mum and dad got there after they'd done all these checks and stuff just to clear to make sure that I hadn't broken my back or anything like that um, and then I said to my dad because I was still with the neck collar on they just wanted to keep me stable I said, I said to my dad I'm going to be sick I'm going to be sick so I was sick and obviously they had to come and take this neck collar off me and the, the worst thing and I, I look at myself now and I think oh, why did I say that but I said to my mum I said mum can you please sponge my hair please I want to go and shower I've got sick in my hair and at the time I was more concerned about my boots I didn't want them to cut my boots off I didn't want them to cut my clothes off or anything like that oh. and I spent a night in the hospital on I think it was a geriatrics ward I can't quite remember because it's all a bit of a blur all of that I still remember the time the day everything still now I still have all the flashbacks even like the the sound of the gravel and just waking up to my friends being hurt and seeing all the blood um, and I've not really talked to anyone about it apart from my husband and a few people in my family.
but that night all I did and I think I must have been a right old pain with the nurses and they really looked after me they really did but I had one student nurse who came and sat with me and just comforted me and you know I, I'm so grateful to that student nurse I really am you know because my mum and dad had to leave me there and go and I was only 16 so I was still you know quite young but I was popped on an adult ward and I do apologize for crying but then I don't because I feel like perhaps I needed to get this this story out there for you to see me you know maybe at my weakest point um, there have been so much hatred on this platform at the moment and I thought this was like a, a community where people supported each other with stories like mine um, and I just felt like I, I needed to get this off my chest and just tell you um, and I do feel a little bit better but I still think that maybe I need to get a bit more closure um, maybe stop blaming myself as well um, I kind of felt like I was to blame I suggested we all went for a drive you know we were on a break from college at the time it was lunchtime and for years and years I blamed myself and I think maybe I still do in a way and the fact that I put my mum through all of that and my dad I just feel a bit I still feel bad anyway thank you for watching my story and if you didn't stay to the end I understand it's a very um, tough subject car accidents and things like that um, and any any incident where maybe you're very close to death as well it's it's a very tough tough subject but we all have our own stories on this platform we really do um, and I know my channels about daily vlogging and vlogging but I will start doing more story times and my story time of when I was diagnosed with fibro and you know how I'm coping now I think that one I might reshare that one an up-to-date version I did one many many years ago about two and I took it off because I got criticized a bit but anyway I'm gonna go now because I need to go and have a big cuddle for my husband and I'm gonna go and order some food I think I'm gonna have a takeaway now um, but thank you for listening to me. Bye.